What is up, everyone? JD here. I hope you're doing well today. We're going to be doing my full review of the NAS Lander 2. Let's get into it. Really excited to get into this one. It is a full-sized Lander, guys, and it has a more premium blade steel. I just realized I was uh, using this yesterday to break down some packages and it's a little gummed up and I do try to make them look nice for their official review. But let's do some size comparisons, profile comparison, check the weight of the knife out, and then I will do the disassembly and maintenance at the end until you guys tell me that you want me to break those videos back out. So size comparison, it compares very well to the Spyderco Para 3. And then here it is against the Spyderco Shaman. Um, so it is definitely more of that medium sized EDC, even though it is being advertised as a full sized lander. It's not as big as the Shaman. Here it is against the Civivi Boltusk. And as you can see, again, more of that medium-sized EDC. So we're going to bring out another medium EDC, and that is going to be the Migaron Moyarl. And uh, it is very comparable in handle to the Moyarl. A little bit shorter in length on the blade, but it actually works really well. And, and we'll see that here in just a second. Let's do some profile comparisons, and then we'll check the weight out on this one because it feels like it's not that bad. It feels... Uh, very similar to the Moyarl. As you can see here, a little bit thinner, so it carries it a little bit nicer in the pocket and in hand. And then we'll bring the Para 3 back out here, which is going to be very comparable to. Um, very similar thickness, and the weight is going to be very nice as well on this one. I am moving a little bit quicker through this piece of it, so I can spend more time on the review and on the disassembly and not have a terribly long video. So coming in at under 3 ounces, this thing is checking all the boxes, a great size, great steel, uh, and we're going to jump into all of that right now. So ergonomically, the Lander has a very neutral handle, uh, slightly contoured, and it is a full four-finger grip, guys, for me, which is very important. I like a knife where I can feel confident ergonomically with it in my hand like I'm not going to be slipping off the back or like I can't get a full purchase on it so this one works really really well good thickness great size this is just for a knife that's comfortable to use and very comfortable in hand this one here really really works the g10 on here is nice and grippy it does have scales that you can remove all of the hardware off of to adjust the clutch lock width mechanism that's down in here it is adjustable i i've decided not to move away from the um factory setting or the setting that it came on from the factory because it feels good um, the clutch lock i think part of the reason it works so well is how it's designed with the crossbar lock and the spine of the knife it has a larger uh, hill to overcome here for that so it makes it feel like a snappier detent and then the springs feel very good as far as being able to use it you can kick it open like most crossbar locks it's just going to fly out with the gravity of it, but the way the thumb studs are placed and how you have to go up with it make it feel nice. Now, I could try to increase it and see if that's going to do anything, but I really doubt that it does. It's just the nature of the crossbar locks. That is not indicative of how the detent feels. It is just the type of lock mechanism where you can pop it open with inertia. Again, not indicative of the detent. How this crossbar locks crossbar lock interfaces with the spine of the knife plus the positioning of the thumb studs like the bug out like the um lander and the i draw on a blank but the first uh, the first one that kaiser introduced their crossbar lock on I, i'm so sorry i'm drawing a blank on that that one has good thumb stud placement as well and it feels very good in hand um the knife itself performed very well in the cut test it does have a nice filler tab here for the reversible deep carry clip that works well goes in and out of pocket nicely um, it does have milling on both scales liners i'm sorry both liners inside to help with the weight on that so it's got a really nice weight um, the balancing on it is very good as well everything feels very well balanced in hand um, right here is kind of the balance point you can see when you get your hand on there it feel it just feels 
really nested in there. I like the thumb studs on here. I was surprised how close they are to the scales. Um, they're very close in there, but again, it works very well when you go to deploy it. Like the way they've tuned, the way this crossbar lock feels, um, it doesn't feel mushy. You know, if you're if you're trying to ramp up for the detent, it, it is going to be something that you can kind of fail. But with these, you just want to flick it. Like you don't want to have any hesitation. You don't want to try to build up the momentum. You just want to give it a quick snip, snip, a quick flip out, flick out. And it is going to work really, really well. Um, it, it feels good from the factory. Uh, blade, blade to handle ratio on it looks good to me when it's open but i did notice that it looks like it could go a little bit further out on the blade so they could have actually made this 3.3 instead of 3.25 i think it is um but they decided not to now this did perform well as far as edge retention i took it through paper first and then i cut through a lot of cardboard and i did notice that it did feel a little thick going through the cardboard um it does feel thin right behind the edge to the finger but it, i think because it is a shallow blade or a shorter blade that thickness felt more apparent when i was going through the cardboard now out towards the tip it definitely felt like it would slice more, um, but this one here I think could benefit from being a full flat grind in front of the thumb studs, and I feel like it would move through the cardboard better. Kaiser seems to do a really good job with their S35EN. I have a sheepdog in this one with the S35EN. Um, after all that cutting, I did not strop it. And you can see it does have a couple of little blemishy spots on it where it does feel like it's getting hung up right now. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to grab the strop and we're just going to see if I can get those blemishes out. All right. So we did 15 on either side. Let's see. Yep. Strop right back up. Uh, I did not keep track of how much I used the knife between that video where I recorded going through the cardboard and actually stropping it here today but that's just 15 on other on either side i feel like if i you know continue to strop a little bit more i probably could get it to be even better but my point is you see how it's pushing the paper out i think the thickness there is a little bit of a detriment to the knife itself i think it should be a little bit of a thinner blade stock i think it would go a really really long way um, if i end up keeping this knife and i look at any kind of cad manufacturers out there that are making scales for this one because i do like the size and the form factor i think this will make a nice addition with my bug out my maverick and my pair of three for being my lighter weight summer carries but i think if i if i keep this i might send it out to um bgm and just ask him if he can just do a flat grind and you know go right up to in front of where the thumb studs are and make it a flatter grind like he did with my nine making it a laser beam the nine was better than this as far as thickness but this was really really good the disassembly and maintenance on this it's going to be pretty straightforward let me go ahead and get set up for that as well so what you're going to need you're going to want a good set of weeha bits um, i'm going to go ahead and throw my own lube on here i really do like this knife i think i'll love it when i get the regrind i think it, it's a little thick for the size of this knife i feel like it needs to be a little bit thinner t6 for your pocket clips Um, this is all steel hardware, which is one of the ways they're able to kind of keep the cost down low for S35EN and a clutch, wall, clutch lock. T8 for everything else. So T8 for your mid screw here for, um, I'm going to put that over here, for your scale. And then T8 for your pivot screw. I think I took this apart to kind of demonstrate how easy it is to take off to adjust your clutch lock. Um, and then what you would want to do from here is you'd want to disengage your clutch lock and i believe that's a t6 to disassemble that is it maybe it's a t8 is it anything at all t8 t6 smaller smaller nope same size It is not anything. So this one here, does it just unscrew manually? Nope. 
It does not. It does not. So you want to take both scales off, it looks like. So grab your T6 here and take your insert, uh, filler tab out. We're going to set these on the top corner so I can keep track of everything a little bit easier. And then we'll do the same thing, T8 for everything else. And I am curious, I haven't gone out to uh, NAF to see if they have um, made any or sourced any themselves, but I haven't seen anything as far as what's being made out of out there. Um, we'll take both these scales and set these to the side over here, and then you'll do the same thing. Just disengage uh, your clutch lock carefully you should be able to just kind of slide it down and let it fall out sorry guys this guy here is being a bit of a pain i probably should take it off um, the clutch lock mechanism to make it easier to disassemble uh, but i'm being lazy and then what you can do from here is these are t8s as well and you can just take it apart from one side. You really don't have to take the whole thing apart, I don't think. All right, so we'll set these close by so that I know these are the internals. Should be able to take it off from there. And you can see the pivot stays inside. These look like they're really thin. Um, and it is captive. I do like that about their clutch lock mechanism, the fact that it is captive, and they did polish it to make it really operate smoothly. So I do like that. Nice little small stop pin there. Again, this is just uh, everyday carry size. Got something on my finger there. There we go. We'll take that out and clean these up. These are definitely thinner. Then the um, 116th, I think these are the 364 bearings, but I like these bearings. I, I don't think they need to be replaced. They do function very nicely. All right, let's go ahead and clean this up as well. I got something in my finger here. I'll take a look at that after the video. All right, everything is cleaned up. Let me grab my lube of preference, guys. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the captive pivot. All right, like that. And I'm not going to cheat. We're going to do the same way we always do. We're going to lube these up. Yeah, these roll really nicely, guys. I, I honestly don't think... You need to upgrade. You can if you want to. You know, it's your lander. Do what you want. We'll reinstall that um, while we have it. So it'll be a little hard for you guys to see. But same thing I always do. Just a little bit on the pivot. Take the blade. Reinstall it. It is a little bit more challenging of a disassembly uh, with the crossbar locking knives. Because they do want to... Um, the thumb studs do want to kind of raise it up a little bit, and these liners are super, super thin. So if it falls out, don't get discouraged. Just push back down on it and pick your liner up. Be very careful because there's nothing holding the blade in place. And go ahead and grab your other liner and put that together. And then you can go ahead and, again, be very careful with that. You can go ahead and grab your two screws. Uh, with your T8. Actually, they're steel, so they should magnetize. Yeah, make life a little bit easier for me. They should magnetize to the tip. I'm just kind of using my index finger to hold the blade from flopping around and cutting on me. <laughs> um, so, should... Oops, I thought I had it on there. Shouldn't be terrible to reassemble. Just be patient Take your time, be cautious and careful with the reassembly of the knife. Once you have the liner together, um, you should be able to just reinstall your lock. I'm going to go ahead and just test it. I'm going to move it up one spot, one spot Oop. Um, 
to see how that does. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just slide in this like so. We're going to go down to the bottom and it should let me pull that lock bar in and over to keep the knife from moving. And then I did this upside down. So we're going to pull it back out. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, I should have realized when I saw how the, uh, the, the Omega spring was <laughs> that I was putting it in backwards. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right. So once you have that in there the correct way, you should be able, oh, Alexa's telling me something got delivered. You should be able to just slide the, um, Omega spring up. I'm going to move it from three away to two away. A little hard to do like this with it holding it up. Um, there we go. This is a much better position for me. So we're going to move it to two away from three away just to see if it feels any different. Um, if it doesn't, it's so easy to take the scales off one at a time um, to adjust those. We can see how it will perform here in a second. We'll see if it's any easier or harder um, to get it to flick open with inertia but again that to me really doesn't do anything for the detent um that's really more for uh how it feels when you're pulling it down and how solid it feels locked up all right so these are all my bits for the show side we'll be able to use the t8 to go ahead and get the pivot on and because it is captive in the way they designed that lock you can go ahead and snug it down and then same thing here, T8 to assemble the body. And then while we have the T8, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Before we do the pocket clip and everything, I'm just going to check centering and I'm also going to check the inertia. See if it'll do anything to prevent it from flying open. I think I may have over tightened that. Uh, we'll check in a second. I think I over tightened a little bit on this side all right so that's all the body screws yeah I definitely over tightened it I definitely 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 over tightened all right so we'll back it out slightly there we go still centered let's see here let's tighten this side up just a little bit and loosen the side just a little bit well actually this side was okay all right, centered. Okay, it helped with inertia a little bit, so there you go. Um, it definitely feels a little bit stronger uh, detent-wise on the deployment. Okay, just trying to go finger tight. I can't tighten that one anymore. Still centered. Yeah, it definitely made a difference. So there you go. Uh, I'm still learning the clutch lock mechanism. So my apologies for misstating earlier. It definitely makes a difference going from one to two. Uh, and it definitely feels stronger on the deployment. Let me go ahead and get it completely re reassembled here. We'll do one more check. And uh, that'll be it, guys. Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments below before you forget. Don't want you guys to forget any questions that you may have. Um, and let me know your thoughts and impressions on the lander. Also, has anyone seen on the lander 2, has anybody seen um, anything scale-wise? That's weird. Why is that not going in? Am I in the wrong hole? Are they different? Has anybody seen anything scale-wise uh, being offered for the Lander 2? Whoa. That does not feel like it's threaded very well. Okay, that feels good. Maybe I have my screws backwards. Is that a standoff? No, it's not a standoff. Okay, yeah, they're, they're specific with how they go in. That's interesting. 
um, they're, the screws are different, or the threading on mine is different anyway. Uh, but has anyone seen any other scale options yet on the Lander 2? It's just hitting the market, so there may not be, but I am curious. Uh, oh, I did say I would do one more test. Hold on, let me, uh, so I don't knock my lube over or I go flying because it's kind of standing up, up to the side here. Um, let's do one more test on setting two. No, still can kick it out. So before I was probably you know holding it normal here but if you go down low enough with inertia you can get it to kick out so not really a difference um maybe a little bit harder to go out um and honestly i think i like the the number two setting better so i might switch mine back um, but I'll do that after the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this review and the disassembly and maintenance helped you with this particular build. And shout out to everyone out there that likes, comments, uses the links, and is subscribed. I appreciate all the love and support. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. And until next time, peace.